Morning and welcome everybody. My name is Noji Ratzlaff and welcome to the the um, April and um, April Fool's Day, but no fooling. Um, to, this is the April uh, meeting of the Utah Valley Amateur Radio Club. Uh, glad to see you guys all on and I'm sure there's more joining. In fact, every second there's a few coming on and glad to have you. At any rate, um, we are transmitting right here, broadcasting actually from um, Orem, Utah. No, this is Provo technically, isn't it? Yeah. From technically Provo, Utah. And uh, glad to be here. Glad to have you all on. All right, let's go ahead and move into this. We've got a few things lined up, but we've got a few announcements. We've got some uh, a bunch of new hams that came on board and and uh, you know, a whole bunch of people have passed their exam, got their technician license. Um, and then we uh, we have a, um, a couple of other announcements and presentation. Tonight, we're going to actually hear a presentation from Clint Bradford. We're going to talk about some satellite work and be kind of excited about that. Looking forward to hearing what he's got to say. And, and I've been very, um, uh, very pleased with them, how things have been going back and forth for that. At any rate, um, if I could have everybody please um, mute your uh, microphones, I think that's going to benefit all of us. And then just go ahead and unmute as you need to speak, and we'll be good for that. Um, let's see. Um, and then feel free to, if you have any questions or any kind of uh, concerns, uh, please go ahead and post those in the chat and then we'll keep monitoring those as time goes on too. All right, well, let's go ahead and launch into this first and start with Carl. Carl, could you please go ahead and um, tell us a little bit about the, the 76ers barbecue coming up after you unmute. All right, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, good. I'm glad I'm not wearing my mask because you sound muffled. Um, <laughs> seven six barbecue, June twelfth, Saturday, ten to about three. Uh, we're gonna have a chicken barbecue with with uh, potluck. Uh, we usually eat around noon, and it's gonna be at Highland Glen Park, which is just below Lone Peak High School in Highland, uh, up way there above the temple, and. Um, we are going to have a, a Noji's going to uh, exercise a new antenna, I think. Uh, uh, he's going to put up a get on the air station so we can do some HF. So those who haven't got an HF before get a little, little chance to make some contacts. Uh, we usually have a um, um, fox hunt there. There's a little lake there. So there's plenty of things for the kids to do. And so bring the family up and uh, bring your favorite dish or whatever you're going to uh, bring up for the potluck and I'll do a, I think I'm going to do about a hundred pounds of barbecue chicken. And so let's, let's come up and have some fun and get to know uh, uh, some of the group. So anyway, uh, we will have some door prizes, some raffles, uh, not door prizes. We will have raffles. And if you're a seven, six member, um, you get a first raffle ticket for free and you can buy as many as you want after that. That's how we support the, uh, the effort there. Anyway, um, that's about all I got, Noji. Is am I missing something? Well, um, just one thing I want to add, and that is that if anybody shows up early, I'd love to have your muscle and help to help me put up my antenna because it's going to take more than one person to do that. I've got two masks to string up a dipole. All right, <clears throat> sounds good. There's usually people up there at uh, you know eight or nine in the morning setting up and stuff like that, but the you know, the biggest part of the group doesn't show up till about ten. That's been historically the, uh, the, uh, the, the event up there. So hopefully it gets pulled off a little better than last year because we COVID kind of put a dent in things. This is right when COVID hit and everybody was running scared uh, last year. So uh, hopefully everything will go good this year. So anyway, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, and no, 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 do you one more thing, by the way, yeah. uh, wasn't talked about that. I heard um, I put my number in chat for the drawing. If we're doing drawing tonight, so um, other people might want to do the same. Okay, go. Thank you very much, Carl. All right. Um, um, did you want to make mention anything about um, an upcoming uh, um, ice cream social, or is this too early? It's kind of getting warm outside, you know. Yeah, oh. yeah. Way too early for that. I had to unmute. Sorry. Way too early for that. We usually do that in uh, September or so, and. Uh, We'll probably do the same thing as we did last year uh, down at uh, Leatherby's in Orem and um, and uh, see how high we can pile the ice cream and eat it. Okay, so we got a reservation, do you think, already or not yet? 
Oh no, I'll wait till way closer to the event. Uh, so okay. yeah, no worries. I just just popped in my head. All right, thanks, Carl. Appreciate that. Well, let's uh, move over to Wendy now, uh, KW3 NDY, and Wendy, um, you got an announcement for us, right? I do. So if Trevor would put it up on the screen, uh, we have Utah Valley Amateur Radio is participating in the Utah or the ARRL Field Day, June 26th and 27th. We usually meet, oh crap, oh, there we are. <laughs> it's doing all kinds of strange things. We will meet up there on Friday the 25th. If you want to camp out, it's a fun time. Um, it's up by Strawberry. There are instructions on the website on how to get there, what to bring, what to show up with, and how to have a good time while you're doing it. So uh, it's uh, June 26th and 27th is, is the actual contest. And we go all night, and uh, it's uh, uvarc.club under the uh, 2021 field day. We do have the um, notice from the Forest Service that we do have permission to be there already. So that's moving forward. Um, Noji, did we find somebody who's willing to bring up our porta potties? Um, yep, we did, and uh, he's very willing, and he'll be there. He's committed. Oh, good. That's taken care of. We usually have a potluck on Saturday evening, and um, the kids can run around in the in the dirt, and we have a good time getting on the air, and there's a go-to station, and if you haven't done HF, it's a great thing to uh, get your feet wet and uh, sit by some people, rub elbows with the more experienced hams, and... Uh, just a great time camping out. There is no cell service, so it's all ham radio. Awesome, thank you so much, Wendy. Yeah. Um, hey, there's one more thing too. Um, so first of all, before I move on to that one more thing, anybody have any qu comments or questions for Wendy at this time about field day? I got a comment. Good. Uh, some of us show up there like on Tuesday or Wednesday and and make a, a whole, you know, camping, several days of camping up there, but it is primitive camping. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, I'll be there Thursday. That's the earliest I can probably make it. And you'll probably be late at that. Yeah, probably that. So maybe I should say Wednesday, right? Then I'll be late and that's okay. All right, anybody else have comments or questions for Wendy? Go ahead. All right, then, Wendy, I'm going to put you on the spot for one more thing. Uh, my apologies, I did not warn you about this, but any idea about, um, about our swap meet coming up in September? I think we're having a swap meet where everybody oh, gets man. together and swaps stuff. And it's going to be at, at the Spanish Fork Pavilion right by Costco in the North Park. Awesome. I don't even know Thanks what day it is. It's the last Saturday in September, whatever that turns out to be. Okay. It's the last yeah. Saturday in September. <laughs> so look, it might even be, I have it on its own website. Woohoo! <laughs> I need to update the date on this. This is still last year. Oh, but... yep. So we'll get uh, that information updated, but it's the last Saturday in September. It's a great uh, amount of time. It's... And that's on uh, UtahValleySwapMeet.com. Yep. You can sell or buy or just meet people face to face. It's a great time. Awesome. Awesome. Do you know how much it's going to be to get in? Oh, hey, it's five bucks to get in. So that's really cheap. And you can get, see um, the website for if you want to have a table, but we just do it at the door. So we set up what, how early is it? Like 7 a.m. we can set up? Yeah, I think we can't get in any earlier than seven. Yeah, so it, it's, a, it's a good time. So are there going to be door prizes? Well, I heard there was going to be some pretty fabulous door prizes. Yeah, last year we gave away two HF rigs. <laughs> um, so who knows what this year is going to bring. Oh, I might have some swag to give away. Yeah, yeah. The, la right. the last Saturday is the 25th. I just looked it up. All right, so 25th. All right, very good. Yep. Any questions or comments for Wendy about our swap meet coming up? This turned out to be a quite a big deal. Um, uh, this swap meet, kind of the the, the counterpoise to the um, the U Utah Valley um, Utah Valley the Utah VHF Society swap meet that doesn't exist right now. So um, we're hoping it's going to be very fun. 
a lot of people have been looking forward to some swap meets. They have not been able to go to them. So we're hoping to take up the slack and happy to do so. Thank you, Wendy, very much for that announcement and work on that. You're welcome. Have a great day. We'll have All a great right. presentation. Seven three. All right. Very good. All right. Um, so we have um, one person waiting in the wings to make an announcement here. And that person is um, All right, I believe that was um, 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 Jack. K, was that was that Jack? Yeah, K seven um, or K six, W six K R K was it? Yes, it is. That's right. Okay, yeah, Jack. That's right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't forget anything. Please go ahead and take off with your announcement. So, so I'm joining your meeting from California. So I'm the guy that checks in every now and then to your net W six K R K from Hollister, California. Um, and I've enjoyed uh, your group. Um, and um, I have a couple friends there, Dave Andrus, K7DAA, and uh, W1CON, Mark Conrad. Um, we've all served together in the uh, Hall area. So I'm kind of between San Jose and Salinas is where I'm located. But I was telling OG today that I have, a, um, I, for about five years, I've been running a, um, uh, a group um, meeting like you guys are doing. Um, we call it, we named it HF night for ham fun. So we have, a, we have speakers that come in. We meet on the third Thursday and we've had everybody from um, DX engineering to uh, Dave Andrus, who's there locally. He's actually got 15 patents. And so he'll come in. We just did a session where we did the little nano DNA uh, network analyzer. We talked about how this works and we had a, that, this coming next uh, in April, we're going to have some uh, examples how to do installs of uh, radio equipment into vehicles. We do all kinds of stuff. And um, um, we've had logging software things. So I just wanted to invite you guys, if uh, where I'm listening to your group here, I'd be, I told uh, Noji I'd send a link out. And if you guys are interested um, in joining us by Zoom, it would, you, you'll find a new group. They're not, they're a nice group, probably like you guys. That not everybody else, everybody there is LDS, and out here in California, we're a mixture of everything. So we have a lot, a lot of fun. They're really a nice group. We're part of the uh, San Benito County Amateur Radio Association, and uh, kind of cover a group from Morgan Hill, California, Gilroy, and uh, Hollister. So uh, we usually get about twenty people attending, and. Uh, is we have a lot, a lot of fun. So if you're interested, uh, like I said, we've been, I've been organizing for five years and uh, just wanted to make it available for you. My email is uh, just like my name. It's jack at jackkirk.com. If you're interested in being part of the group, I sent out a, um, a um, message like today. I sent an announcement. I'll add you to the announcement list and you're just welcome to join, okay? Any questions? Noji, you're going to post that, Noji? Yep, I will. As soon as I get the information from Jack, then I'll, I'll relay that to everybody else, both on Facebook, and I'll send it through uh, uh, email to everybody who's not on Facebook. Okay, Noji, I got your email uh, off QR, uh, QRZ, so I, perfect, I, perfect. I think I copied you earlier today. Awesome. All right, we'll be in contact. Thank you so much, Jack, for the announcements. And yeah, at least you know, you know who the guy is. Every now and then I check in on your nets and the 10 meter net. I, I actually checked in and got through to, from California and I checked in last night. So now you'll know who the face is there. Okay. There you go. Yeah, now we know who uh, W6PRK is. Yep. Thank you. All Thank right, you. Jack. Thank you very much. All right. Well, um, so I don't have the list, dog on it of all the new hams and upgrades. Um, <clears throat> that was my, that's my failure. I left it at home just as soon as I left, I knew I forgot something. But anyway, um, there, there were uh, upwards of 35, maybe 40 people who just uh, got their licenses uh, in our valley here. And um, we welcome you to this valley, welcome you to the club. A few of you have already joined the club, that's really awesome. And uh, I think there were four people, or no, four or five that had upgrades. And so that was pretty cool too. And uh, congratulations to all. Welcome to everybody who just recently got their ticket. 
Um, and if um, if you're on on uh, Zoom at this time, please go ahead and stand up. <laughs> All right, never mind. But thank you and welcome everybody. All right, without any further ado, whatever that means. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn this time over to Clint now for his presentation. Um, Clint, um, are you uh, hearing me okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not that old. Okay, well then, time is all yours. That is, of course, the most commonly used word the last 14 months in the English language is mute. Am I muted? How do I mute myself? Mute yourself. Anyway, good evening, folks. Those newbies, um, a few of them found you because you're a webmaster. Who's your webmaster? Is it you, Noji? Who does, who's the webmaster? Um, of, of, the, well, of the uh, club of website? Your or website, website or the club website? <laughs> yeah, which one? Which website? The Utah Valley Amateur Radio Club site. The one with, that we just saw Wendy show with a white background, nice clean background. That's that's Trevor. Okay, if you have you Googled yourself lately, if some new ham just puts in Utah Amateur Radio or Utah Valley Amateur Radio, you come up in spots three through ten. Nice. Not shabby, not shabby. So whoever your webmaster is, they deserve a, a pat on the back. People pay tens of thousands of dollars for Google placement like that. So good work, good work. Oh, we'll we'll share double his salary for sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll double his salary. <laughs> okay, we're going to one more button here. More share sound, play, play slideshow. Test pattern up now for everybody, full screen. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, outstanding. Uh, calibrate your screens. Here we go. <laughs> Tonight we're going to talk about working amateur radio satellites with low power, which is a watt or two. Uh, but before we do that, uh, some introductory notes. This is a surprise for all of you attending this evening. Uh, Carl, listen up. <laughs> Noji has graciously provided facilities for us this evening. If you just turn around and go out the door and down the hallway, you'll find the restroom. Uh, and he has provided goodies hors d'oeuvres for us all to eat. If you go down the other way in the hallway and find the refrigerator, anything in there you can have this evening, all courtesy of Noji. Tonight, it was my wife's homemade cheddar cheese soup that, that I found. So, Noji, thank you for the refreshments, and that's where the restrooms are. Hey, for um, you. And I, I think you might find out anybody who's wearing a Buzz Aldrin shirt, and, and he wants it back. Uh, yeah, we're going to try and have a good time, but, uh, yeah, don't try that. Don't, don't, don't have fun. We're supposed to be learning something. I was almost late this evening. I stopped at the store on the way home. It only took me 12 minutes in the store, but I had to wait another 48 minutes before I could leave. You may laugh if you'd like. That's a 60-minute only. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Wendy, th thank you. And, and if, if you don't think that's funny, you might as well just just hang up because that you, I got no <laughs> says I have th three hours. I was funny hours, just on mute. And we're, yeah, but anyway, that is that is. And then uh, coming home, what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> I have, uh, what the heck does that mean? Uh, I mean okay, anyway. Uh, did you all check out your, your uh, ORM newspaper this morning? Nobody saw that online? That's on the front. This, that's you, UVARC. All, all I know about ORM is WordPerfect. My wife had a direct line to a, a technician at WordPerfect in ORM, Utah. Uh, that's all I know about ORM. And I still have these. I just can't. How, how can you throw history like that, th Carl? Thank you. How can you throw history like that away? For those newbies and those younger, those are floppy disks. They're five and a quarter inches in uh, in length and width, and they hold about what 300k of of material. Um, I can't throw that away. I, I can't I have nothing to read it with. But anyway, your newsletter is fascinating. You even during this pandemic, you have kept up a wonderful, wonderful newsletter. I, I can't see this. Karen, would you please read this question to dear Annette? Dear Annette. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Dear Annette, what's your opinion about a ham radio? Oh, I just lost it, honey. It's a, what's your opinion about ham radios in the bedroom? Seems like a great way to stay in contact in case of an emergency. Now, Annette was very, very diplomatic in her, uh, her response. Uh, in California, 
uh, and I know you only have a 17% divorce rate in, in Utah, the nation's lowest, but in California, that is grounds for divorce, of uh, taking, taking an HT in the bedroom. But uh, what a wonderful newsletter you have maintained throughout this, this pandemic nonsense. Uh, it, it was a delight to look over, look over past issues. Did anybody participate in the QSO Today virtual ham expo two weekends ago? Show of hands. Anybody log into this? It was a well, well conceived two day event, all online. Ten dollar admission fee, sixty or seventy different programs. Michael did. Michael, yeah, Michael, yeah, Michael. Thank you for hanging in there. We had some uh, technical problems uh, logging in for some folks, but everyone who paid, you have until April twelfth and probably extended to watch all those seminars online at QSA Today Expo Ham. QSA Today Ham Expo dot com. Um, also coming up next Saturday, Yuri's Night. Yuri's Night from five o'clock your time on Yuri's Night dot net. The sixtieth anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's flight around the planet. Ted, what you got, Ted? Ted, please unmute yourself and ask. Ted, you're not muted. You are muted. Go ahead, Ted. I didn't have a question. I just would let you know that I was part of that. Oh, um, we, we apologize for the technical problems. The, the system just crashed. Uh, no, but uh, it, yeah, it was bizarre. I was on from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the morning. When I, I went to get some more coffee, came back, and the thing had just, it took me two hours to get logged back in. It, it was bizarre. Uh, and Eric, who ran it, is, is uh, just... Uh, getting ulcers over it uh but anyway we can all we can all watch that stuff online uh yuri gagarin is is russian's first uh is our first gentleman who circumvented the earth in a satellite in a, in a um, spaceship from russia and the, russia is opening a huge museum we traditionally have slow scan television from the russian module and the russians from the iss this time of year to c commemorate yuri gagarin but we have a, f a crew change, uh, a lot of projects, and they're doing a lot of the ARISS co school context this next coming week. So I don't think we're going to have SSTV from the ISS in April, but watch for it in May and talk about reality TV. Who was watching this live last month? Landing on Mars. That to, this to me is reality TV, not that big brother lost on an island with an unmarried woman nonsense. This, this, this is just, just gorgeous television. And then the, you saw, everybody saw this first shot. Did you see the second shot that came from, from the rover? Okay, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. And just today, just today, a wonderful color shot. Uh, and it, it answered an age old question. Oh, excuse me. Here's another, here's another shot uh, from the, uh, of the lander. But today, today it found the answer to an age-old question: Where do all those socks go in the dryer? And and Rover found they're up there. They're up there. That's where they're at. Okay, that that's what you're getting for the next three hours, folks. Um, in January, on an extravehicular excursion uh, activity, the uh, science the, they messed up our cabling for our uh, two meter four forty uh, Kenwood TM D seven uh, TM D seven hundred mobile rig that's in the Columbia module, they put a connector on that was defective. Uh, we thought it was going to take months, but during the same weekend, two weekends, as that QSO party, they went out and they put the original connector back on, original jumper cable back on. I think they went to HRO and got it, but they put it back on, and now our, our machine is back up. So that was just a wonderful, and here's that astronaut with that section of cabling. Um, the one they replaced back in January had five more ports for a future uh, client, a future customer. Uh, it looks like Bartholomew, but I'm, I'm misspelling it. B-A-R-T is the first four letters. So something was wrong with that cable. Well, since their equipment isn't up there yet, they said, well, let's just put the regular, uh, the, the old cable back in. And they, they got it out of storage and did that for us. So right now, Packet is on, on the International Space Station for us. And I just want to share two, two of my favorite photos with you. Um, in a very unique setting, that is, that is the, uh, the Earth the space shuttle Endeavor on her last mission. This is during STS-130 uh, coming towards the International Space Station on her last mission. And uh, that if you go to nasa.gov, you guarantee you'll get some screensavers, guaranteed. Uh, I'd like to thank NASA for letting me reproduce that. And then this one. 
who knows what uh, what telescope that is? Anybody, anybody knows what that is? Anybody remember the Apollo 11 mission to the moon? Noji, you're too young, but uh, anyway, Apollo 11. This is the Parkes Radio Telescope in New South Wales, Australia, that provided us the black and white TV images from Apollo 11. But look right underneath the focus cabin. You see that streak of, streak of light there in the sky? That's the space shuttle orbiter Atlantis on her last mission coming back to, to Earth. But it gets better, folks. Look to the right. Look to the right. You see that other streak of light over there? That's the International Space Station, about three minutes, about two minutes behind Atlantis. Just a historic photo because we, because of Apollo, because we'll never have a shuttle program from U.S. again. Just a phenomenal program uh, photo, and I'd like to thank John Sarkissian of Parks Observatory for letting me use that. Uh, here we are at Ham Radio Outlet, um, showing off the Aero antenna. Um, it's best if you work these satellites. Again, we're just introductory introduction to, to what we're going to do tonight. But it's best if you work these satellites in true full duplex mode where you can hear the downlink as you key your mic. So that's either two radios or a THD 72, which is no longer made from Kenwood. Uh, but somehow listen to the downlink as you key your mic. So I'm here in the foreground with a headset on. In the background is a local personality uh, with a elk log periodic and the speaker open uh, the uh, speaker up for folks to hear it. Uh, we've been on Ham Nation, that's okay. Uh, here's a Yuri's Night a couple of years ago. If you notice that little handle there, that, that hacksaw handle on my arrow, we'll talk about that later. That, that is a three and a half pound uh, antenna, but when you have to hold it for 12 minutes, you wanna get yourself orthopedically correct. We'll talk about that later. Question. I got a question. What date is Yuri's Night this year? Yuri's Night, thank you very much, is Saturday the 10th. Saturday the 10th, it begins about four o'clock Pacific. Please go to Yuri's Night dot, dot, Google dot, Google it. Uh, it's either org or com, Y-U-R-I-S, because we can't yeah. put apostrophe, can't, can't put apostrophes in there. Yuri's Night oh. dot, Dot net. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, my wife and I never uh, walk through Target stores anymore without seeing things a little bit differently. My wife saw this and saw the flat, the flat top to this, and she had just bought me a Dremel tool for my birthday, so I had to start cutting up something. But uh, you know, a couple of those biennial uh, gel cell, well, the lithium ion or lithium polymer cells in there. Uh, it's got a handle built in. Uh, now it's got USB sticks on it, but just just a nice little portable pack to have. Just something, just seeing a, a Playmate cooler in a different mode. Are there any engineers on the call? Any engineers in the room? What was the small handheld radio? Who's, who just mentioned, who just asked something about a handheld radio? Please repeat that. The chat is asking what the small handheld radio is called. Uh, back three slides, please. It just went too fast. What little radio was that? That one, right? That's the ASU FT60. Not a, not a full duplex radio. It's an interesting radio. It is the best feature set of any, and I never use absolutes, of any FM 2 meter 440 HT on the market. Thousand memories, easily to manually program, large display, receives 108 to a gig, uh, receives AM air properly, and its unique battery situation. With its optional FBA 25 battery pack, you can slap six uh -huh. nickel metal hydride or six AA alkalins in there and have full power available to you if you really need it. I'm not a fan of five watts of an HT. Uh, anybody, any experienced person will tell you, if you're not making it two watts with a better antenna with your handheld, you're not gonna make it with four or five. So uh, the Yesu FT60 uh, debuted in uh, Dayton in 2004. There is no better feature set in an FM only, two meter 440 radio out there. Uh, you, slap, you slap double A's on your THF6 from Kenwood, you have one half of one watt for 10 minutes. You slap a double A pack on the brand new FT70 from uh, Yesu, you've got about a half hour of half a watt. Yesu FT60, I know some of you already have that, already have that. Um, we'll, and we'll, talk, we'll talk about that a little later. Here's my QSL card. Here we are, um, the Los Angeles County Fair a few years ago. We just worked three countries with two watts. 
I, I, I didn't say cities. I didn't say counties. We worked Mexico, the U.S., and Vancouver, British Columbia were two watts. A better antenna, of course. You need some gain. You need some gain. This is a half a watt coming to you from 500 miles away. But it's the ultimate line of sight experiment. I'd like to thank you for supporting the ARRL. You're going to be coming up on f uh, five years. That was a very wise decision. Who in the room? Who in the room is already an ARRL member? Show of hands, please. ARRL member. Thank you very much. Okay. Show of hands. Who is not yet an ARRL member? Be honest. A few of you. That's cool. And who just refuses to raise their hands at Zoom meetings? Okay. There are a couple. Uh, the ARRL is the nation's largest lobbying body for regional and national amateur radio concerns. They usually get it right. With your membership, you get a monthly magazine, QST magazine. You'll get a, uh, a new email address because we all need another email address. It'll be your call sign at ARRL.org. Uh, you get discounts on their publications. Anybody taking advantage of the equipment insurance plan that the ARRL offers? No? Richard, your brand new uh, your brand new repeater is it insured? Richard, go ahead and unmute yourself. It is. Homeowners. No, okay. No. All right. Please check out arrlinsurance.com. I've been with State Farm for fifty years, for more than forty years. <laughs> They're great for and and your mobile rig. Uh, the computer I'm using right now, you know, that stuff usually is not covered with uh, homeowners or vehicle insurance. Usually you have to get a rider or something. I, let me finish the pair. Is, it, is the question regarding insurance? Yeah. Go ahead, insurance question. Go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll, thank you. Uh, how do you. I've been asked how you apply. Um, it's a $50 deductible per loss, but it's current day replacement cost. I think it's. I think the premium is dollar fifty per one hundred dollars of evaluation, but State Farm could not beat that rate. So please, if you're interested in, in your repeater, uh, your, the computer, uh, Noji that you're using there in the room for ham for ham radio, you know my 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 MacBook and my MacBook Air, all that stuff is all insured with the AWL Insurance. Go to awlinsurance.com and check them out. That's where you apply for it, and that's and there's a you can actually call them and actually talk to a real person. Uh, but it's uh, something you should look into because uh, in California, I know that, you know, that the mobile rig is not automatically insured. If it was stolen without, ins without telling State Farm to get a rider, uh, it it's a complete loss. But this insurance, if you have anything that's worthwhile, uh, think about it. Think about it. AMSAT is another organization I would like you to think about, AMSAT.org, A-M-S-A-T.org. We were founded in 1969. We are a nonprofit, so uh, you know what that means. Your accountant will tell you all about that. Our mission is to build satellites and to disseminate information about them to the planet. We are international in scope. We have 30 chapters across the globe and we welcome contributions. We, uh, we put satellites up and teach folks how to do it. And the other organization I'd like you to think about is ARISS, A-R-I-S-S, -S, Amateur Radio Aboard the International Space Station. This is the, comp this is the organization that is the liaison between the space agencies, the International Space Station, and those wonderful student projects where you see students get to interview an astronaut who is streaking across the sky um, aboard in the International Space Station. Anybody working with the Raspberry Pis? Raspberry Pis? Anybody working with Pis? A couple of hands. We have right now two Raspberry Pis, exactly like this, with the Sense Hat on them, uh, aboard the International Space Station. They're they're working with projects that elementary, junior high, and high school students have sent projects to. Mostly in Europe, not very many from from the U.S. But can you imagine these students on their first job interview? Uh, yes, I've done some computer programming. Yes, it's on board the International Space Station right now. And uh, it's right now measuring defoliation of plants in Africa. Whoa, that's our future. There they are on board the International Space Station. So please, and there's the kids getting their, their certificates from Tim Peake of the European Space Agency. If you want to see a wonderful marketing program, a wonderful educational program, look at astro Pi. Dot org, astro-pi.org. A lot of hams think that uh, 
working the space station is is the the, the high peak of, of being a technician or tuner 440 work uh, who has watched actually watched the iss streak across the sky early in the morning or, or just after sunset sundown anybody actually see it streak across the sky yeah, yeah a lot of people it's it never fails to to excite me i i i just automatically yell, my God, there's people on there. Well, I was at a Best Buy electronics store one night at 7 o'clock, and I knew it was going. I just started grabbing people in the parking lot, and I said, look, look, look. I couldn't. This family in front, I didn't speak their language, but once we saw it, and I said, International Space Station, here we, they all are trying to take, uh, take photos of it. And, you know, some folks really like contacts like this. NA1SS, Kilo 6, Lima, Charlie, Sierra. Pardon? <laughs> Commander Weissman, thank you very much for what you're doing for Amateur Radio this weekend, K6LCS. If that looks like a um, slightly overweight guy with a Yesu FT60 turned down to 2 watts and a $15 tape measure beam working the International Space Station when it was about 465 miles downrange, 2 watts, are you nuts? Well, what's the Amateur Radio's maximum? Work the lowest amount of power you need. Well, there's seven or eight dB gain in that silly little tape measure beam antenna, and we and we pulled it off. We pulled it off. This is field day a few years ago, um, when they gave us a few a couple of revolutions for us to work. But that was Commander Rick Weissman for us, uh, and and just an extra. And you know what? If you just hear packet or just hear part of a conversation with the schools, that qualifies you to receive the gorgeous. International Space Station QSL card. Where is it? It's right there. If you just hear it go over, you don't need to work it. You don't need to work it, pack it. You don't need to talk to it. If you just hear it, go to my website, look up, uh, I think it's on the Slow Scan TV page, but the address for, for Bruce uh, up in Apple Valley, California is the ARISS QSL manager. And if you just hear packet go by or hear part of a conversation, that qualifies you for this gorgeous, uh, gorgeous QSL card. Which Slow brings, down pardon? Slow down okay, speed. okay. About eight years ago, I was honored to be able to orchestrate one of those contacts with uh, with the International Space Station. Uh, we had national public radio there, we had media there, and we almost had to abort because I had an audio problem, and because NASA does not want us to to waste their time, but we pulled it off. There we are. The students are talking to uh, to flight engineer Don Pettit aboard the International Space Station. And by goodness, they got themselves the next day front page newspaper coverage above the fold in color in California's sixth largest daily newspaper where they belonged. It was a wonderful, wonderful event for our brand new city back then. Okay, so let's see. What am I supposed to be doing tonight? Work ham set. Oh, let's talk about working ham satellites with your handheld radio. Uh, my name is Clint Bradford. K6LCS, Kilo 6, Lima, Charlie, Sierra. Just a ham since 1994. Also involved, involved in the commercial side of the radio industry. Um, you're about the 110th group I've given this talk to. Uh, conventions, ham fests, uh, obviously not just in my region, but uh, nationally and internationally now. Uh, I was sales manager for ADI and Premier Communications and Prime. Uh, the audio Now the, all I do is audio accessories. I worked for Motorola Commercial uh, a couple of years and then for Ham Radio Outlet here in Anaheim, California, a couple more. I reside in Harupa Valley, California, about 45 miles east of Los Angeles with my wonderful wife, Karen, and our rescued lab, Freya. And you betcha, with those ears, we'll go out in the backyard and, and do 1.2 every once in a while. My work sat.com website work hyphen sat.com website um, 15 20 years ago I, I thought i couldn't do this at all and, and just walked on by an amsat table at a convention when i realized that people were working it with low power i got on the internet and i found all this information and i programmed it all and none of it was current it was satellites that had died seven eight ten years ago that's the beauty of the internet. It, it's once you put information out there, it's it's uh, it's it's out there forever. So please, as you do your wandering, please stick to sites like amsat.org or amsat-uk or my site, which was last updated uh, 28 minutes ago. 
uh, sites that date their information for you. Make sure what you were. I, I had a scout leader call me last year and was upset with me that he could not work AO51 for his scouts during a uh, during a annual event. Well, AO51's end of service it, it passed away about eight years ago, but the information's out there on it. So please just make sure what you're looking for is current. So by those introductory slides, you already know the answer to these. Let's demolish some preconceptions. The first preconception is that you, you need 100 watts, that expensive Yesu rotator, and multiple Yagis on the roof. And we all know, do you need all that stuff, everybody? Couldn't hear you. Couldn't hear you. But Clint, it's an expensive proposition to do this. Is that true? No, it's not. No, Terry, thank you very much. Most of you already have the necessary equipment to work amateur radio satellites. There's the iconic ICOM W32A early serial number that is a true full duplex radio. A friend of mine in Texas has made more than 9,000 contacts with a handheld and an improved whip antenna. We do not uh, advise you do this with a whip antenna. You can certainly receive two meter downlinks from the satellites and from the International Space Station with your handheld radio. You can hear slow scan TV with your stock duck on two meters. That two meter signal coming down is about six to eight dB stronger for us than, the, than a 440 signal would be. And hams are working slow scan TV, receiving stock duck, open up the squelch, hear it come over, hold their smartphone up to it with a $3 application on it and and receive and decode beautiful images from the international space station on the two meter side uh but, but for transmitting no you need some more directionality more gain for transmitting either two meter or 440. knowledge is power knowledge is power sir francis bacon 1597 my mom uh, dated the guy knowledge is power okay um yeah who can noji can anybody tell me what time it is anybody got the time 7.13. Anybody know what time it is? Oh, it's trivia seven, time. Trivia it time. is tri uh, trivia time. Not everyone is asleep. Outstanding. Oscar is a acronym. Who knows what Oscar stands for? I do. Go ahead. What, what does Oscar stand for for us, please? Orbiting Satellite Carrying Amateur Radio. Keith, you are absolutely correct. Orbiting or orbital. You started with orbital, but NASA thought that was too geeky sounding, so they changed it as if, you know, wearing shirts like this, talking about. Anyway, orbiting satellite carrying amateur radio. And here is America's first Oscar one. If that looks like sheet metal held together with rivets, <laughs> that's because it is. Look at this high-tech componentry. Boy, no, uh, no magnifying glass needed for that surface mount component. And there it is. Look at the dollar amount. I remember that as we talk about modern satellites, but it cost a little bit less back then. Look at the Dymo label maker tape on there. I'm sure that froze off. This is now what I don't mean to put anybody on the spot, but did anybody actually hear this back in 61? It was just a Morse code emitting a little bleeping. Yes, yeah. All right, sir. All right. All right. Outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, wonderfully successful, uh, did, it want, did what we wanted it to do. A few revolutions around the earth emitting Morse code. This is the most text you'll ever see from me on a page. I apologize for this. But just for you to know, Oscar 1 was in 61. Oscar 2 failed. Oscar 3 was our first amateur radio with, uh, satellite with a transponder on it. There have been more than 109 Oscars. Russia's always been involved. And we've always had amateur radio on the shuttles, Mir, and on the ISS. The astronauts and the space agencies involved with the ISS uh, don't think we're a toy. They respect our equipment. We wish they would use it more, but they respect our equipment. Our, on the ISS, our system was used uh, primar when their primary system was down for routine maintenance. It is in their plan for emergencies and for backup. So it's respected equipment. Uh, just last December, we got a new Kenwood transceiver up there as part one of a 10-part series of amateur radio equipment including we're gonna have a we're gonna have a, a an aris pi an ariss ham radio dedicated pi that you and i'll you and i'll be able to access uh in the next couple of years the low earth orbiting satellites you can work with low power 
uh, about 250, 350 miles above the Earth, and their orbits are every uh, every about uh, about two uh, every two hours. You'll run across a few terms, nothing techy, but a few terms as you work satellites. Orbit is simply the path of the satellite around the Earth. Doppler. There's a Doppler accommodation you must make on the 440 side of life on a two meter 440 satellite. Uh, let's say that satellite is transmitting on right there in the middle transmitting on 435 300 you need to acquire above that's my mnemonic device acquire above so as it's coming off the horizon you will be tuning to 305 and 310 just bump it up a couple notches either with vfo or uh, or have these programmed the modern radios have about a million memories just program these and just and there's no scientific method of when you change. It's all it's all the human ear. When it gets better or worse, you just flip it back and forth. So when it's a 440 downlink, acquire above, work it at 310 and 305, right above you. It will have as little background noise as Richard's brand new repeater. And then as you lose it, slightly below the center frequency. So on the 440 side of life. Now, Noji, I asked everybody to bring their slide rules. And I'm, I'm sorry we're not there in person. We could, we could all do this together because there's how you calculate the Doppler shift. And I know Wendy's got a slide rule in, in the drawer. But um, for engineers, don't for the non-engineers in us, don't worry about it. I've already done it for you. Here on a 50 or 60 degree elevation pass, of one of our low earth orbiting satellites on two meters look at that just plus or minus three kilohertz deviation no big deal but look at 440 20 kilohertz deviation plus or minus 10. there's a slide rule there's Yay. a james james and he actually knows how to use it too way to shoot james all right uh this is a, I, I love these people this is a great group this is a great group was is my, is my mic still on Okay, um, so please, on the 440 side of life, whether if you're transmitting or receiving, accommodate for Doppler. Now, if you were working 100 watts computer-controlled rotator, uh, computer-controlled, yeah, computer-controlled rotator, Yaggies on the roof, down to the horizon to horizon, you might want to accommodate for Doppler on 2 meter. But what we're doing with handhelds, uh, starting at 5 or 6 or 7 degrees elevation, don't worry about 2 meters uh, and, and the Doppler phenomenon. If Leo is low Earth orbiting, then Heo must be must be high. Thank you so much. And then Geo is geosynchronous. Um, if you had asked any AMSAT person 10 or 15 years ago, well, we have a geosynchronous satellite above North and Central America. No, absolutely not. It's too expensive. That real estate up there at 22,500 miles is, is horribly expensive. Uh, it needs to be a maneuverable satellite so we don't bump into your Super Bowl coverage in January. So, uh, no, it, couldn't, it wasn't going to be possible. But we've got a geosynchronous satellite now over the Atlantic. Uh, Europe is, is working. And I think in a few years, just watch AMSAT and Eris. I think something's going to happen. What, what a, think of that as a resource for that natural disaster, that flood, that tornado, uh, a regional problem. It, this is not going to be 2 meter 440. It's going to be 5 and 10 gig or something. But having a geosynchronous satellite above you for 24 hours, 7, 24 7, in, in case anything happened, or just for chit chat for, for contesting. Uh, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. And again, if you'd asked us 20 years ago, uh, just impossible because of, of costs. Uh, that's redundant. Uplink is your transmitted to, signal to the satellite. Downlink is the received signal from it. Footprint is simply the circular pattern on Earth, circular area on Earth where you should be line of sight to a satellite. Uh, and your satellite tracking programs we'll talk about will show you all of that. Um, this is out of space. This is out of order, but here's a heavens above ground plot of a satellite pass, and that red circle is where I, it should be a line of sight to me in uh, in Harupa Valley. And now I know some of you folks are asking, you know, why do this? Uh, Richard just put up another repeater. Orm's got twenty repeaters to easily that are easily worked. Why why mess with this ten minute pass once or twice a day? It's just something cool to do, and you can do it with a technician's license. 
when we get to go out to parks again and you whip out a tape measure beam and start talking to either a terrestrial station or a satellite, you will draw families to you. You will talk about amateur radio, what we're doing. You'll talk about the space station. You'll have your club's brochure in your pocket to, to hand out. It just is a wonderfully exciting aspect of this magnificent hobby we call amateur radio. Uh, what got me involved in amateur radio was a demonstration of packet a hundred years ago. Wow. I can marry my love of electronics and radios in this hobby called amateur radio. There's so many aspects of this hobby and just with your existing HT and that old tape measure that's in the back of the kitchen drawer, you can be working these satellites. So that's why, that's why let's flip to 2004. This cost a little bit more to launch than the bird in 1961, but this was AO51. This was the most magnificent, most wonderful teaching, learning, marketing for amateur radio satellites program ever. It was so wonderfully easy to work. It was so one. It went into different modes for us. Cost 110 grand to get that launched. Uh, there it is, the little little CubeSat. There we are in the front. In the front left of the payload there, there are three CubeSats there, but we're the only amateur uh, gear on that payload. And it, it was, these birds that were, excuse me, these satellites that we were working, they are sun synchronous, which means they're going north to south or south to north. So they're always getting hit with sunlight and the solar cells are always getting hit with sunlight to energize their batteries. We went into a 1.2 gig uplink mode. It, it, it was just mar a wonderful education tool. Uh, it, it passed away a few years, and we're trying to duplicate the, the wonderfulness of it again. Um, sun synchronous, you'll get to a point where you will just know whether the pass is going to be north to south or south to north because of the software and stuff we'll show you later. You'll know the approximate height off the or elevation off the horizon and whether it's going to be to your east or to your west, you'll, you'll get to a point in a couple months where you don't even take your software program or your printout with you outdoors. It is not a minute, hair-raising, tiny moving of your antenna to follow it. It's, 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 it's far enough away, and the antennas you're working, enough, working with have enough gain that you, it's, you can be sloppy. That's a technical word. You can be sloppy. It's not, it's not, you know, it's rocket science but it ain't rocket science. Sun synchronous, I've said that twice already. Uh, when your wife goes on her first trip to Tibet for six weeks, you start watching telemetry of some of the satellites. Some of them are, are sending subaudible or telemetry data down, and you can rec listen to this. Any engineers think this is cool stuff? Solar panel condition, battery condition. Anybody th oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, you just put the pot on endless brew, and when your wife's gone for that long or your significant other has gone that long, you can just do this 24 hours 7. That is really fun stuff. The Saudis have a satellite up for us. Okay, I know you're all getting sore with raising your hands, but none of you are going to raise your hand for this one. Who in the room, ha who in the sh on the call has an HT battery that has lasted 19 years? This satellite was launched 19 years ago. It's still working. It's a little off frequency. It's a little less sensitive than it was 20 years ago, but then so am I. Only 250 milliwatts coming down, but it's definitely workable with a better antenna on your handheld. SO50, Saudi Oscar 5.0, still working after all these years. Uh, that's Paul Simon. I, okay, I have to give credit to MCA Records. Uh, but Saudi SO50, uh, definitely need gain to get into it. The, the, the engineers are going to yell at me, but that two-meter uh, tape measure beam plan on my website it works SO50, although it's it's a two meter, maybe because it's a third harmonic for the 440. I'm not sure, but it, it'll work for you. It's got enough gain in the wrong place. But SO50 is one you can work. AO27 was launched many, many years ago, died about five years ago, came back unexpectedly three or four Decembers ago, and is back up again now. It might turn off uh, mid-pass, but it's, it's up there and working, an easy two meter 440 uh, repeater. Um, so plug in also AO27, uh, just a mystery of space. And why, why, you know, why did it fail? Why did it come back? We, you know, we couldn't send a mission up to repair it. So, uh, but AO27 is back up and running. We've had a couple problems in our last three launches on Fox 1B or AO91, AO92, and the most current RAD FX project. 
they're not working. Uh, we're, not, we're not sure why. Please do not, even if you hear it, please do not transmit to 91, 92, or the new R RADFX pro, RADFX project. Uh, control operators are working on them to see if they can resurrect them. Uh, if you hear something, they would love to hear it. I'll show you how to report uh, your, uh, your reception reports in a minute. But please do not transmit to them. A, uh, a control operator in, in Utah might be trying to send it something, and if, if, we, if you and I both send signals to it, we're going to mix everything up. So unfortunately right now, uh, you know, I, I don't delete anything off my, uh, my handhelds, but 91, 92, and RAD, FX, please do not transmit to them. So the minimum requirements, again, true full duplex is best, but don't go to eBay and get an old FT530 or one of the older Kenwoods uh, for a couple hundred bucks to do this. Um, if you happen to have the THD72 from Kenwood, that's a true full duplex radio. The 74 isn't. Um, and if you can't, if you don't have a, a full duplex radio, use a second radio. Use your nicer radio with its better receiver to receive and transmit on the other one. Uh, if you're using a tape measure beam, it'll require a duplexer or a diplexer. If you want to get someone else involved, you know, have them stand 10 or 15 feet away and, and be the reception receiving for you. But if it's best if you hear what you're transmitting for two reasons. One, it'll let you know you're actually getting into the satellite. And secondly, it lets you know if you actually stepped on someone or not. So true full duplex is the best way to go. Not mandatory, though. Radios like the modern Yesus allow you to program two meters transmit, 440 receive in one memory location, or just the opposite. They call it split frequency coverage or split freaks. For you FT60 owners, it's on page 28 of your manual. Not true full duplex, but you can key the mic on two meter and here on 440. Again, best done true full duplex, but not mandatory. Just treat it like your local repeater. You don't intentionally step on someone. You wait for a break in the action, then try to work it. Are there some FT60 owners in the FT60 people? Any hands going up? It's an older rig. It's a great rig. Uh, but and if, if you have the FT70, the VX6, the modern Yesu rigs will do that split frequency, that split mode for you. Uh, and in Yesus, the plus and the minus will show up on your uh, display when you do that. Improving your stock antenna. We all know that stock antennas are negative 3 to negative 10 dB gain or worse. One of the more popular aftermarket antennas is that beautiful diamond SRH320. They are wonderful antennas. Here, here's one here. Um, they're expensive. They're good. They're always 14 inches long, though. If you want a better performer on two meters at half the price, and hams love deals, the little smiley is the, is a sleeper antenna in the industry. They're built here in Southern California. It is a collapsible metal antenna going on your delicate handheld's antenna connector. We'll talk about that in a second. But it outperforms the SRH320 on two meters, and it's half the price. If you're thinking of doing some antenna changes and changing your antennas out for working satellites or something on your HT, please know that quality SMA connectors are only rated at two to 300 connect disconnects. And if you're buying a, a, a lesser, a lesser expensive import radio, that's not the high quality SMA connector. And so it's going to be a lot, a lot fewer connections and disconnects. So think of protecting it with uh, a little adapter and go to BNC. I'd rather see you wear out a $15 adapter then have a $60 repair job in your Yesu or have to throw away your radio. But I think that one on the left, though, is dangerous, and I'll show you why. Let's put a heavy, heavy coax or heavy antenna on either one of these two. The one on the left, that's the, I hate to say this, but it is the Yesu CN3 adapter. But look at the nut down there at the bottom where the arrow is. If you make a mistake with that, drop that, put heavy coax on that and, and wiggle it around, it is metal-to-metal -metal contact yanking straight up against your circuit board, yanking your connector right off your circuit board. Maybe you'll survive the first fall or mistake, but it's going to fail right during your event, right during your net, right when you don't want it to happen. Compare that to the one on the right that has a, 
a rubbery cushion to it that you can make a few more mistakes with. I, I, I don't like, I apologize for harping on this, but I've, I saw too many radios come into ham radio outlet for repair from hams who just accidentally, accidentally dropped it. And that, that semi rigid stock antenna just, just, you know, broke that center pin off engineers. I've seen it even worse. I mean, look at that, that bottom, that's an N connector N to SMA. That makes that, that oof. My, I just skipped a beat. Okay. Orem, if you just had a meal, or if you are faint of heart, please do not watch the next two slides. The following is not suited for minors. Viewer discretion is advised. You have been warned. Turn away if you are squeamish. I don't know, James. I don't know. I think, I think there are seven. This guy went to Radio Shack. I bought one of everything. One, two. There's a F connect. There's a there's a cable TV. Don't do this to the hobby. Don't do this to your radio. Don't let some reporter say, oh, that's why they call it amateur radio. Don't do that. Oh, of course, each and a third of a DB loss, too. Don't do that. Don't do that. There are jumper cables for you from, uh, oh, Diamond Comet, uh, from your ham. You're going to have them at your uh, your swap meet in September. Yeah, please protect your, your HT's antenna. Uh, Diamond makes a couple little ones. There's a lot of difference between the mounts on your antennas. If you look at your different HTs, uh, how the base of the antenna mounts or hits the case. So ask a fellow ham who's got the same radio, uh, which of the uh, connectors mates best to your radio. Just FYI, the little MH209 there in the center is is my favorite of the very, very inefficient antennas. It's, it's, uh, it's worse than a stock antenna, but for an auditorium or a, uh, or a uh, coliseum, it's, it's, a, it's a cool little antenna. That's just my favorite of the, of the, of the inefficient antennas. When, when your wife goes on her second trip to Tibet for six weeks, you whip out your Motorola equipment and you start testing amateur radio handheld antennas. This is a total waste of time. This is a total waste of time. As we all learned in adolescence, longer is better. Longer is better. And for us in the amateur radio world, 2 meter 440, about 17 to 19 inches is, is where we tap out in efficiency on uh, on stock antenna, don't don't do it. Don't do this. If someone tells you they're going to spend the weekend uh, testing HC antennas, it's a total waste of time. There's UHF and VHF. Longer is better. Double your pleasure. Oh, well, here's an old ad. Who would like to know how to double the battery life of the radio? Everybody complains about short battery life. Who would like to know how to double the battery life of the radio? This is free, Noji. I didn't tell you how to do this. There's no extra charge for this information. Turn your transmit power down to two watts and improve your antenna with either the Smiley or the Diamond or the RD98, the 17-inch whip. If you're not making it two watts with a 17-inch whip, you're not going to make it at four watts. Engineers, am I right? Yes, the guy in the crazy shirt is right. So there, I just doubled your battery life. You want to improve your battery life even more? Yes, I do, Clint. Yes, I do. Use an audio accessory. Is he nuts? Is he is no, it, is he drinking the Heil wine? What's the first thing you do with your volume control if you put a headset on or an earpiece in your ear? You turn down the volume. What eats up your battery? Key in the mic and loud audio. So there, I just more than doubled your battery. You thought you wanted another battery because you had low battery life. Try, try, try improving your antenna and turning your power down. Get perpendicular. This is a bumper sticker I actually had on my truck until I realized I needed to respect my marriage more. But uh, as you hold your handheld radio up and key your mic, your transmitted signal is going generally about 90 degrees out from the top third of your antenna expecting to hit your friend across the street or uh, or Richard's new repeater across town. But most of the amateur satellites are not land-based. Thank you. Thank you, James. Most of our satellites are not land-based, so you need to get that perpendicular relationship to the orbit of the satellite. You'll be opening up your squelch all the way anyway, so it's going to be a little noisy, but when you get, when you get the right 
perpendicular relationship, you'll hear it with that slight dip in the background noise. And then when you start hearing that dip in the background noise, about a minute and a half, two minutes later, you're going to start hearing people talking. So get perpendicular. That bumper sticker is available for a $10 donation to AMSET. Nochi, when you get as old as I am, um, pictures like this just 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 make just bring tears to my eyes. The young man on the left, high school student at Santa Barbara's Ham Fest a few years ago, just got his license the day before. His very first amateur radio contact was through a satellite with me at the Santa Barbara Fairgrounds. Is that cool? But it gets even better. His dad and his grandfather were there. I had three generations of a family all working satellites. So besides the picture of my wife that I want to be buried with, I'd, I'd like to be buried with this one. This one gives me good vibes also. Oh, that the little hacksaw handle there. Uh, that, those don't come on the aero antennas. The aero antenna is a commercial antenna. It's a it's Yagi, uh, seven elements on two meter, three elements on, no, just the opposite, Clint. It's seven elements on 440, three elements on two meters. Um, it is a wonderful, they're expensive. They're $160 with a diplexer in it, which means you can run both of its, uh, both of its antennas on one radio. The elk log periodic is another wonderful commercial antenna. Also about the same price. The log periodic by design has a wider frequency response. So it's just not quite as grabbing of the initial part of your pass than the narrower focused arrow is but either is a good investment well why should we get an arrow uh, how much gain is there from a tape measure beam that's a funny pun how much gain is there from an arrow to an uh, from a tape measure beam to an arrow you're gonna have to make that choice yourself that tape measure beam looks funny but it's got seven or eight db gain in there um, so anyway back to the arrow um, it is heavy. It is forward heavy. If you notice on its mast right there at the end, there's a little hole. These are tapped out for you for a camera tripod, quarter by 20. And this little contraption on the back here is just angle iron or angle aluminum. That's, that just fits my radio. Uh, because in the beginning, I was not paying attention to being orthopedically correct and ergonomically correct. And I developed, uh, I don't know if you can see, well, you can't help but see because the arrow is there. But I de developed this, this defect in my wrist, and I went just right down the street to ORM Orthopedics, and they diagnosed it. It took them about six months, but they diagnosed my, my problem, and it was arrow wrist syndrome. Don't be a victim of arrow wrist syndrome. Get yourself ergonomic and put a, put a little handle on your, uh, on your arrow or your elk. The elk you can do it also with. Eric, Eric, thank you, Eric, for the courtesy laugh. I appreciate that. Uh, and there is my, uh, oh, that's just that's just my homage to our space program. That's an empty bottle of Tang. Um, and little cue card there. This is obviously a demonstration. Cue card there. We're receiving International Space Station slow scan TV at Ham Radio Outlet. And Joe Walsh, famous guitarist, has, has been a, a very good friend of amateur radio for many years. And to hold everything together, just use a charity bracelet and hold everything together. Because... You know, being having a holder like this helps you out because when you work satellites, you need one hand for the speaker mic, one hand for the radio, one hand for the antenna, one hand for the clipboard, one hand for the pencil, one hand for your smartphone with the uh, satellite pass data, and so uh, one hand for the pina colada. Uh, you you run out of hands. So anything you can anything you can do to to take away a, a necessary hand, it just helps helps things out. Well, now you need to know where these are because they are passing over us at 12,000 miles an hour. They're not over us every day of the week. Well, here is your AMSAT engineering team hard at work deriving orbit information for you. And if you're older, like I am, this is just so cold warish. Uh, I, I love that photo. But anyway, get your slide rule out. Here we go. It's very easy to calculate these satellite passes. Are you ready? All you do is plug in the epic time, element set, and inclination, RI, node, eccentricity, arc, and the perigee, mean, anomaly, mean, motion, decay rate, and plug in your checksum and plot it out on your equatorial graph paper. Got it? Everybody got that? So easy to do. We have middle school children doing that. No, don't worry. It's all done for you. Uh, who's still using a Palm device? Who's still finding batteries and using a, a nice little PDA Palm, little old trio, just two of you? Po Pocket Sat Plus for Palm will give you wonderful satellite pass data. 
Pocketsat 3 is out there for iPod Touch and older iPhones and older uh, iPads. Ham Sat Droid. Any Android folks? Yeah, okay, Android. Uh, there's a trivia question right there. What is wrong with this picture? Let's see. The guy in the weird shirt was talking about sun synchronous, and he was talking about north to south and south to north. That's correct. You're absolutely correct. This is a pass that will never happen. This is why we were beta testing this program, and the program is now known as AMSAT Droid Free. AMSAT Droid Free in the Google Play Store. Uh, and you can tell how much it costs by its title. It gives you a beautiful map and gives you your satellite pass data. Uh, anybody, well, you wouldn't admit it if you were, but if you had a BlackBerry, SATME might work on it, S-A-T-M-E. G predict any Linux folks out there? Are you Raspberry Pi folks? Yeah, yeah. G predict is a glorious program. Look at this. Uh, here it is. This is a hamvention someplace, but there it is on a monitor. Uh, I'm running it off. There's hanging on the left side of the monitor. There's my ras one of the Raspberry Pi 3B pluses. Uh, it, it's a gorgeous program. It'll also port to Windows and to uh, to I uh, to Mac, but it also controls some rotators. And G-Predict and Linux, it's it's free. It's absolutely free. A wonderful program, G-Predict. Uh, but right now, my go-to for the Apple iPhone is GoSat Watch. All one word, GoSat Watch. Uh, developed by a Canadian ham. Um, it's 10 bucks. It's nine ninety five. It's not the cheapest app, but it does everything, and he is very responsive to our needs. Uh, earlier this year, NASA changed the manner in which we acquire this orbiting satellite data for the ISS. Within three weeks, the author of this program had his program corrected and uploaded to the Apple Store. So that, and being able to get a hold of him, email. Uh, when you go to my website, there's a lot more antennas. There's a lot more satellite prediction programs out there. I just like recommending ones to you that are more trouble-free and are have instant answers available for you. There's a wonderful program called Orbitron, O-R-B-I-T-R-O-N. It's been out for 20 years. It has not been updated in 15 years. I do know a couple of people who do have it working on Windows 10, but why suggest you a program that's not being supported? So I want you to get into this and, and, and get the easy, easy stuff and the, and the stuff that is supported for you right away. SAT PC32 is wonderful for Windows. If you're a member of AMSAT, you can get a little discount on SAT PC32. It's a commercial program. Nova for Windows is now freeware. It was a commercial endeavor. Uh, there's a code on my website where you can, you can enter it, and it is now freeware. Any Mac folks in the room? Any Apple folks? All right, all right. I apologize for this. This is... Look at this nice high-res image for Mac. And look at that jiffy thing for Windows. I apologize. But Mac Doppler Pro for Mac. Uh, another program that if you are a member of AMSAT, uh, you get a little, little discount off of. It's a, uh, it's a commercial program. And it is time now for our homage to Alex Trebek. What is the final Jeopardy question? to play that entire 30 seconds that's a licensing requirement from sony but anybody know the answer know the final jeopardy question keith says kepler it is indeed it isn't i'll make that the form of a question and you'll be right who is kepler that's right joanna's kepler uh, my wife was 10 miles away down the road at a, at a at a meeting. It was a nice summer night. The windows were open. She heard me screaming in delight. I have never known Final Jeopardy uh, before this or since this. But yes, Joannis Kepler. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, the little mathematical statement of satellite orbits. They're called Keplerian data. And at midnight tonight, we're going to have another Zoom session where we can decode these uh, for you. And we'll have great fun tonight at midnight. 
uh, but all your satellite programs will decode this stuff for you. You don't need to, to do it. But Keplerian data. Too. Cool. Okay, cool. Thank you. Several people had that. Um, you should update your Keplerian data. Do it at least maybe once a week. The ISS re repositions itself due to atmospheric drag. Yes, due to atmospheric drag, uh, a couple times a month. So it might be a little bit off. So all the rest of the satellites are going to be, you know, they, they, they do not change their orbit. But if you're going to work the International Space Station, just get in the habit of, of updating it once a week. And I need to say thank you to Sony Entertainment Network for letting me use that clip, because if I don't thank them, they have really aggressive attorneys. Free online information, heavensabove.com, heavens-above.com, n2yo.com, and amsat.org. All free information. The key, in, the key input you need to do with any of these programs or, or websites is make sure you put in the correct time of day and your correct location. Those are the mistakes I have made where, you know, I, I will be someplace and, oops, uh, I left it at the author's default location in Germany. And that's not going to give me my pass. So as you start up, make sure you know that your grid square or your location is in there and also the correct time of day, whether daylight savings time or not. Uh, here's another ground track plot from, from Heavens Above. On my website, if you want to make sure you're all in sync, I have a little widget that was uh, written for me by N2YO. It'll let you know where the ISS 91 and I2 are right now. So you can make sure you're all in sync. And as you start off, go ahead and use two sources for, for input to make sure things are right. If, if, if you are looking at SO50 for tomorrow and they're completely not the same, completely not the same. I'm sorry, I just lost my command of English. If they are very, very different, something's wrong. So check out which one is, is wrong and, and why. General procedures, you need to listen and open up your squelch. And this sounds weird, but don't transmit until you hear something. Now that sounds weird. And SO50 is the exception we'll talk about in a second. But with the, bur with the satellites that are, are not working right now, uh, we don't want to transmit until we're told by AMSAT to do it. Uh, the other satellites like AO27, uh, control operators might be sending it stuff. So hams will know and you're close enough to the west that you will almost always have someone available for you on the fm satellites uh if the if your pass is towards the west you're almost always going to have someone there um this and we'll talk about so 50 in a moment and be courteous and quick on the weekends this is not going to be anything more than your call sign your grid square have a nice day uh there are People are going off, uh, going for awards for grid squares. They're scouting events. The weekends are just madness. Uh, I say madness, smiling. Some some hams get irritated with pileups, but it's like, well, come on, that just means there's more people trying to trying to <laughs> trying to work it. Uh, and of course, very important to work true full duplex where you can hear the downlink all the time before you key your mic. How far can you go with one of these? Well. I went to, to Athens, Georgia from Southern California. That's 2,000 miles. That by no means is a record for a low Earth orbiting satellite, and that, uh, nor is it something I can duplicate every day. And if you look in the upper right, the footprint told me I wasn't going to go more than four or 500 miles. So uh, it was a four-degree elevation pass for me. I apologize. I was using full four watts uh, with Arrow. We, were, we each had FT-60s and four watts. But, uh, yeah. If you're, if it's a 10 degree elevation pass for you or more, try it. Less than 10 degrees just might be frustrating because it'll be just a, a little harder to work, further away and harder to work. Okay, if you were still meeting at the community center, who knows what the grid square is over there? Who knows what the grid square over is at your old meeting place? James, you know the grid square over there. The M40. Uh, uh, please repeat it for me phonetically. I couldn't hear the first letter. I think it's DM40. I don't know the uh, the, the finer the, the suffix. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, you are correct. Uh, and it's Delta November. Uh, your club is is well trained. Please use the internationally accepted phonetics, not not Dicky Norris or or something. Uh, use the internationally accepted phonetics. And just know where you are. But yeah, you, that is your building, isn't it? Is that the, the complex you used to have your meetings at? Yep, it is. 
Okay, okay, cool. Okay. Whew. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Delta November 40. We already talked about that. What I use for demos is the Yesu. You know, I've got the, I have the, the THD72A from Kenwood, but I just don't take it with me to, to demos because I don't want people to think they need to spend that much on a radio. You can do it with two less expensive radios. You can do it with a radio you have already and getting a, a better reviewed one of those imports. I can't say Belfang on the, on the radio, can I? No, I can't say Belfang. Uh, but you get a lesser. Uh, my favorite of the imports is the Wushan UV9D Plus that is marketed from PowerWorks. PowerWorks is a California company. Um, Owned by Hams, run by Hams, supported by Hams, and the little Wushan radio is marketed through Ham Radio Outlet. That's my, that's my favorite of the, of the of the lesser lesser expensive imports. Stay off of eBay for those Baofangs. Uh, those dealers, most of them are just selling boxes with really older firmware, uh, really sp spurious emission nonsense, and they don't care. A, a lot of those don't care. There are some reputable dealers for you on Amazon. Uh, but eBay is a selling box. A lot of them are just selling boxes for 25, 30 bucks. They don't care what occurs. You know, it's your responsibility when you key the mic. So anyway, use your better machine as a receiver and uh, get a, another rig to transmit if you want. I use the Arrow. Last time I took the Elk out, I'm not, not sure why, but I, any of them, I use a little adapter cable to, to protect my HT's antenna. For SO50, here's how I have it programmed. If you notice the receive frequency in the center there is 436.795, number 205, 436.795. It's really a little off frequency. It's 797, but it's, you know, don't worry. It's rocket science, but it ain't rocket science. And acquire it above. Don't, do not go out to 815 and down to 780. That was just, you don't need to go that far up and down. Just two steps up and down with your radio. And this one requires as most satellites do, a tone on transmit. Leave your receive open, never never close tone them, but it wants a 67.0 on transmit to access it. Is there, is there a blue arrow in the middle of that screen? But anybody know why that 74.4 is doing there? Is that a typo? Anybody know why that's there? Okay, you worked SO50 a few times, and it's Thursday night. It's late. You can't get to sleep. You look up at satellite data and, oh, SO50 is going over. You go outside, you key the mic, and, and, and no one's there for you. Shoot it a 74.4. Transmit 74.4 and turn its 10-minute timer on. You become the control operator of a satellite. If someone hasn't used it for a few minutes, and someone, your fellow hams don't know how to turn it on, you turn it on, and then go back to 67.0 and work it. You have a question. The, the, where's the, give me the question, please. Michael wants to know, what about the Wushan radio? Ask for specifics, what you want. Uh, someone had a question regarding the Wushan. Go ahead and unmute yourself. And ask Michael. me, Michael, Michael, ask me about the Wushan, please. I just uh, wonder if you could repeat the uh model number of that radio it's the wushan uv 9d plus but the one that is marketed through powerworks powerworks has there's another company out there called better safe radios um but the firmware and the powerworks what powerworks has done business with them longer and has a few little intimate things that they have had the factory do for them uh, they're about the same price but these are uh, the UV90 plus. It also will do uh, not SO50, but the other satellites with their 440 down, like two meter, excuse me, the 440 up and two meter down. It'll do full duplex, but not on SO50. It has a desense problem. But I just, I just happen to like this radio and we can, we can, you can email me and talk about that, that one later. But anyway, back to 74.4. You think the first time I did that, I wasn't scared crudless? I thought, oh, God, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to crash into my koi pond. The handcuffs from AMSAT are going to be tight. Um, if you know it's there because you've worked it before, someone else might be up with you but just didn't know how to turn it on, you can turn on SO50. I, I still think that's cool. That's exciting. For the Fox units that are 2-meter down and 440 up you have to accommodate for 440 on the uplink 
a little different from from uh, and again a 67.0 on transmit leave leave receive open tone so let's put this all together. We're almost through with part one of our three-hour series here. You know when it's going to be there. You know, uh, thank you, Michael. You know where it's going to be. You know your grid square. You've been to my website or AMSAT and got your radio program correctly. Put that all together. Please use your own call sign. Uh, Kilo 6, Lima, Charlie, Sierra. Oh, I have forgotten. Is it Delta? Delta November 40, handheld. Is it Del is D Delta, folks? James? It is Delta? Okay. Um, and that little word at the end, handheld or demo. Some are there any AMSET members in the audience? Any AMSET members? Show of hands. One, two. Okay, some AMSET folks get upset with me for thank you, sir, Michael, for for saying handheld. It's a third of a second of airtime. I'm not going to say K6LCS uh, Delta November 40 demonstrating in front of the Orem Valley, but just say handheld. It might let. Some of the diehards have done this a million times, and, and the guy in Texas with 100 watts and a, and a foot switch, and uh, it might let some people back off and let you get in there and get something, to get your communication done. All it is is indicating uh, that you have low power, and demo means you might be in front of a group and, and folks. Satellite, about 98.4% of the uh, satellite operators are, are courteous and, and great. You have a question? Five minute warning. You got it. Okay. Uh, and when you hear a satellite or when you don't hear when you thought to, please use this resource. This is the live Oscar status page uh, on my site. There's a, a link to it. This is data from you and me. You input like the top arrow there, arrow 27. It's blue all the way across. Blue is good. SO50, the second one, blue is good. The very bottom one, the ISS packet. You go to the page. You put your call sign in whether it was active or not active. And this lets not only fellow hams know what's up and running, but also lets the control operators know whether or not they're, well, look at that, look at that KN0JI worked something this morning. Uh, it lets control operators know what's going on, if they're, if they're sent transmitted signals worked or not. So this is not good just for you and I, but this lets the, the world know what the status is of the satellites. So this, get to use this, whether you heard it or you went out to, and you thought that ISS should be on and it wasn't. They will turn all equipment off, all amateur equipment off during EVAs and when missions are heading towards it and when missions are leaving it. But otherwise, we should have something up for you on, uh, on the ISS. That is at the end of part one. Anybody have any, any questions I could try to answer? Um, just unmute yourself and, and ask. Ben 7 f 3 Rich. Hello, Rich. Hey, uh, you said something about the W32A earlier. Is that an app applicable radio? Um, is did you just ask me what equipment do you recommend to work the Easy Birds? Is that what you just asked me, Richard? No, no. You made a comment about uh, uh, ICOM W32A. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I, I apologize. Uh, that's my next slide. Uh, the W32A early serial numbers is one of those classic handhelds that does true full duplex, as were the Kenwood D7 and the 79. Remember the uh, uh, our, our president has an FT530. I saw it on his website. Remember the FT530? It had the slide in drawer for the memory battery. That's a classic true full duplex radio. Um, use odd split HTs like the 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 Yesus we talked about, or use separate transmit and receive units. But yes, that W32A is a classic. Now don't please don't see these on eBay and spend 200 bucks for one of these because the first thing you'll need is a brand new battery from batteriesamerica.com. Batteriesamerica.com. High quality stuff. You can get them on the phone. They haven't disappointed me in 20 years with purchases. Batteriesamerica.com for aftermarket. They also have a bunch of double A packs, double A empty packs for some of your classic rigs. So batteriesamerica.com. Uh, but those are the, are the classic uh, radios. And yes, at W32, uh, they are, I think the technical term is sweet. They are, they're wonderful. Anybody else have a, have a question for us? Michael? Michael, go ahead and unmute yourself, Michael. Go ahead and do it. Hello? Anybody there? 
Is the screen still on? Am I still on? Yeah, you're on. Oh, yep, okay. You're on. Yeah. Any other questions? Is there anything on the screen there? Hey, Clint. Yes, dear. Are there any other satellites up there to work? Oh, my God. I'm glad you asked that. I have a slide for that, Wendy, dear. Yes, indeed. If you go to ampsat.org, there's a whole bunch of transponder satellites you can work. There are S, there are sideband birds and some more repeater satellites up there for you to work. That's a great question. I'm so glad you asked that. I was, I was, I, I'm glad I had that information for you. Um, if you're cruising the web for satellite antennas and somebody tells you that you're going to get a bunch of gain out of an 11-inch antenna, don't, don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> don't buy it they're trying to change antenna theory and antenna theory hasn't changed in, in richards in my lifetime uh, and look at the price for that thing uh, no if it if it's if this just sounds weird don't do it don't do it um anybody else have any legitimate questions i could try to answer i do uh this is yes, eric sir. Um, hi eric hi KG7WHZ. I have a dual, I already have the duplex radio, and I looked at some of these antennas, and some say, do you need a duplexer? Do you not need a duplexer? And some of those kinds of things. It looked like uh, if the duplexer is built into the radio, I assume I would not need a duplexer. I guess it depends on the antenna if you have two separate feed points for the VHF versus UHF. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how that works. Uh, that's great. Which, which radio is it? Uh, it's a TYT TH9800. Is it true full duplex where yes. you key the mic on band A, you can receive on band B? Yes. Okay. Does it have one antenna port or two on the back for you? One antenna port. Then then your two meter four forty antenna will indeed need a duplexer or diplexer to use to use it. You got it. Uh, and if you want if a true full duplex, gosh. What give me the T H T Y T ninety eight hundred? Yeah. T Y T T H dash ninety eight hundred. Okay. Full duplex, yeah. I need okay. I I need to know more about that radio. Um, are you thinking of getting the the arrow? Um, I was considering it, uh, thinking about that or the elk periodic. That one looked interesting okay. too. Yeah. The log periodic, by nature, by design, does not require a, a duplexer or a diplexer. Uh, mm -hmm. but they're still about the same price. Um, I love the finish, that epoxy black finish on those those elements is wonderful. It's just, and I'm I'm not saying this is being negative, but it's a little sloppier than the arrow capturing the beginning of the of the pass, only because it has a wider frequency range and it just it just doesn't hone in. But that, that's a that's a very small difference in them. They, they each weigh the same. They're each three pounds, three and a half pounds. Uh, either is a wonderful investment for you. Okay, great, thanks. Awesome. Wendy, you're a good sport. Anybody else have any, anything I can try and do for them? If you go to worksat.com, work-sat.com, there's email contacts, there's a phone number, uh, there's a message machine I get back at home 7 o'clock every evening, or email. Um, and someone just get on the, get on the air, just, just to monitor. When the ISS goes over, if you can't see it, just turn on the packet frequency and just to, just to hear it, and you'll get the bug. Now, uh, help me help this old man out. Is there anybody here this evening who just might want to do this for the first time the next couple of weeks. Anybody think they might want to do this? Eric, you're a good sport. Yeah, see, it's, it's you know, if I get three or four, once you get the bug, you're going to spread to other folks. It's, uh, I, shouldn't use, I shouldn't use pandemic references. But once you get the, the itch to do this, it's, it's, it's just exciting. It's exciting. And you'll get to a point where you'll look at your satellite pass data on your computer and just, just walk outside without it and work it because it's either going north to south or south to north, either to your east or to your west. And, and you'll know how high it is off the horizon by how well you're hearing it with your open squelch. I think that is it. One we have time. Oh, we have time for one last question. One last question. Wendy, how'd it go? This was so fun and informative. I had a great time. I learned so much and I might be out there and try something like this. When there's a pass SO50 to the west, I will, let's I will you you have a wonderful unique radio voice. Uh let's work SO50. That sounds great. 
Utah Valley, thank you so much for the invitation of a wonderful group. You have a wonderful president. You have a thriving, wonderful newsletter and and that web presence. When you can get back to shaking hands and hugging people, make sure you hug and shake the hand of your webmaster for getting you that wonderful Google position for search engines. Again, people pay tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars for results like, like people get trying to find your club. And thank you for your continued support of the AWRL. It is very much appreciated. Oh, I gotta. Un I have to start. I have to stop. How do I unshare myself? Give it back to. Oh, there we go. Whew. Everybody says thank you and hugs from Trishana. There we go. Okay, it's back to the. It's back to the present. Thank you, folks, very much. Wonderful group. The Q and A is, is is the best part of all. And thanks for the uh, for putting up with the bad jokes. Hey, we appreciate all your bad jokes, Clint. Thank you so much for taking that time for us. Uh, great presentation. Holy cow! I'm glad, glad we got a recording of this. It, oh god uh, oh god it's recorded oh god now my parole officer will know where i'm at and now we're getting, oh, we can no. threaten your um posterity for generations to come with it anyway thank you so much thank you folks very much all right we don't have a lot of time left this meeting but we have time for the door prizes so we're going to get to that and quit and get us out of here um but uh, once again yeah thank you clint all your preparation and karen too i know you're in the background i uh, hope it helps so thank you for that so um what i've got here um, like usual, we do have two prizes for our grand prizes. We have a transceiver. This is a TYT TH UV88. And we have the PropCrest J-Pole, which I didn't bring with me, but you guys know what it looks like. So those two are grand prizes. In the meantime, we got four um, not so grand prizes. Um, we have the, we have a um, signal stick antenna, our um, light, it's our... <laughs> Our UVARC light. This is a work light. Uh, the Dyton Mountain View doesn't count, and but we do have a, a one-year AWRL membership. So, and you, um, the first four drawing numbers get to choose which one of the four, and the four includes the AWRL, the the work light, the um, UVARC light, and the signal stick antenna. So, let's get started and. The first number is 6260, KJ7UAN. Jeffrey, you are the winner. And so, Jeffrey, you get to choose between AWR membership, signal stick, the UVARC light, and the work light. Which would you like? Is he here? I don't know. Jeffrey, are you on the frequency? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead, go ahead and move on. Winner must be present, right? Winner must be present. Yep. What's, well, must be online at least anyway. So what's the last name, Noji? Jeffrey Idem, E-I-D-E-M. I don't see him in the in the list on Zoom. He might be on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, okay. Nobody's said anything here. Okay, well, well, I'm going to come back to him. Let's try for the next one. Okay, next one, next winner is 2144, uh, KJ7WDF, Gary Blacker. Are you on tonight? I am. Awesome. So your choice, AWRL, signal stick. Work light or the or the U work light. Which would Let's go like? with the signal stick. You got it. Okay, Gary, with the signal stick. Nice. All right, that one's out. Three to go. Next number is seven seven one one K seven L L O Lori. Are you on? K7LL Lori Fleischer, are you on at this time? Her name is spelled L O R I E. She's is she not on? Okay, we just saw a message, by the way, that um, KJ7UAN has joined us. Um, Jeffrey, have you joined us tonight in our meeting? I have. 
Awesome, there you are. Okay, so you won a door prize and you get to choose between a work light, um, a, a light bar, and then an ARRL one year membership. Those are your choices. Which would you like? What was that second one? This is a, this is a handheld light. And if I pull this little tab out, it'll, it'll use the battery and I can show you. It's kind of a light stick. So it's a, it's a. I guess a, I'll do that, uh, that work light. All right, work light is yours. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. And uh, so Lori Fleischer is not on at this time, right? No. Nope. K7LLO. Okay. Well, let's see. Next one. Goes to 6565 KJ7SNE. Sean, are you on tonight? I'm on. There you are. Okay. So now your choices are going to be either the ARRL membership or the light stick. Which would you membership. like? Okay, membership it is. Let's see, Sean, membership. Nice. Well then, I guess the last thing then is the is the light that will go to Lori if she's there. But doggone it, she's not. So let's roll again. And that will go to three six nine nine K J seven S T I. Adam, are you on? I am here. There you are. Okay, Adam, very good. Let's see. And so that means you get the light stick. K7STI. All right, now for the grand prizes. The first one um, will be the transceiver, the TYT, THUV88. And the transceiver goes to two zero zero six. That's KJ seven UVW. Deborah Hart. I'm here. There you are. Okay, you are the winner of your own radio. Here you go. Room. Thank you. Can you pull to the camera by any chance? <laughs> Probably not. If you can't pull it to the camera, you probably can't have it. Darn it. All right, Daryl, it will be delivered to you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, and then the final prize is the Puckers J pole, which I don't have here to model for you. That is number 7150, KJ7UVZ. Yay! <laughs> Oh, that would be Jessica Johnson. Yes, thank you so much. Congratulations, you're the winner of a, of a new antenna. I, I have to add one thing though. So along with that Parker's j antenna comes the installation. So uh, if you don't mind my presence, why the installation will, is, is included. Oh, that's perfect, thank you. Yeah, you bet. And congratulations to all. And, um, I guess that's it for now. So everybody, congratulations to yourself and welcome to the club. And anyway, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks again to, for, to Clint for his time and effort and his wife and everybody who participated. And especially thanks to Trevor, um, AG7GX, for setting all this up for us. So thanks, Trevor, once again for doing this. Uh, we apologize that we were planning on originally being going to be on in person here, but uh, the state kind of pulled that rug out of under us, so we no longer can do that. But thanks to you guys for your patience. Anyway, that's it. Meetings dismissed.